Hey, we're back on the Coach Rose Show here on KBLKRadio.com. We got my man Iggy from the Iggy Biggity. Road Diggity Dogs. So, dirty, man. dirty day go. Hey, bro, yesterday in college football, uh, a lot of local guys got, got busy again. So, uh, Quentin Meeks from Del Norte. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's okay. He plays yeah. for Stanford. He's a true freshman. freshman. You know, he had two picks yesterday in the Wazoo game. Wow. I mean, six Big tackles. comeback win. Yeah, comeback win right there you're talking about. Six tackles, two picks, a tackle for a loss. And we had uh, Kyle Lewis, we went to San Marcos, plays for Cal Poly. He had 11 carries for 121 yards and four touchdowns. Wow. You know? And Jerry Muhammad from Brawley, 24 carries, 107 yards in the same game. Uh, Ofisa Kose he went to Vista, plays at Arkansas Monticello. He had 10 tackles, three tackles for a loss. You know, the, the Troika over there at Oregon, you know, Tyree Robinson. He had a pick. Yeah, he had a pick. A pass breakup and five tackles. Royce Freeman, you know, he rushes for 100 with, you know, blindfolded. Yeah. So he had 133 and two touchdowns. And Darren Carrington exploded yesterday. He had uh, five catches, 127 yards and a touchdown. He had a 21-yard run. So um, a lot of guys, you know, local guys are, are getting busy. Uh, Timmy Smith from Lincoln, he's a true freshman at Bacon College, NAIA school. How did Bulla do? Uh, he had seven tackles. Oh, Bulla, I haven't seen yet, but it'll seen be yet, up right. on my side pretty soon. So I'll go over all that uh, uh, later on and get all the rest of Carrington's the sister just committed to a school, didn't she? Yeah, where, where's she going? Stanford? Going to Stanford. Stanford, the farm, huh? Going to Stanford, the farm. Okay. Well, speaking there. of local athletes making it big and doing big things, we have a, a young man who went to UC High School, ran track, played football. Centurions? Yes, he was a hell of an athlete over there. And he, he ends up going to USC. It's all right, school. Okay. And now he's a local entrepreneur. And I want to give it up for Deshaun Cunningham. Deshaun, all right. Man. What's up, my brother? Yo, yo, yo. yo. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Uh, Seriously. No worries. No worries, man. You're... So, UC, man, you went over there, you ran track. What what events did you run? Um, I ran the 400, the 800, and then wherever Coach Hustle needed me. So, sometimes I did the hurdles. Sometimes I did the 4 by one I mean, sometimes I even did the 800. Where they needed me. <laughs> that is incredible. That is, you're an athlete. Now, the 800, that's a full sprint now, isn't it? It, yeah, it definitely is. Especially it turned at the into college that, level. didn't it? Yeah. College level, it's a full, full on sprint. Man, I mean, I was surprised when the 400 was like a complete sprint. Now the 800 is yeah. just, those athletes are getting, yeah. there's something else. And you were a running back, right? A receiver running back? Um, wide receiver and corner. Yeah. I remember chasing you guys around, chasing you around. <laughs> You know, our, our, our guys are over at the Who Ride when I was coaching there. Just don't sure. let him off the line. You'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. He's yeah. off the line. It's over. We had to, we had to, we had to stop Cunningham. Man. Yeah. So from UC, you end up going to, on a scholarship to USC. You just got an S on there. Got a full ride scholarship. And it's actually kind of a uh, funny story. Please. Um, I, Coach Hustle had always believed in me. He took me to this indoor track meet in D.C. Um, we were out there in D.C. I wasn't expected to win. I wasn't a top recruit. I wasn't top anything. But he had faith in me, took me out there. Um, there was two heats. So I'm going against some of the top guys in the country. So we're out there, um, and the, the gun goes off. And I take off. I'm running. I'm in the mix. And I get to the end of the race, the last about 150 meters, and I still got a kick. And I kick. I kick it in, and I win my heat. So I get off the track and my coach is like, yo, we're in the mix. We're, you, you're in the finals, the, the top six guys. Right. Yeah, there's only six of you. Oh. So you're, you're in the mix. Dang. Like, let's, let's set it up to, you're running to win tomorrow. So um, we go, we say, we, we get on the track, we, we take off and we're in the finals and we're going. And I'm, I, I'm right around second, third place. And Lo and behold, I, I pull it off and win, <laughs> and then it gets even. The story gets even crazier because once I get off the track, the USC coach is there, and he's like, um, cause "I have to get off the, the track." I call my mom, and I'm like, "Mom, I just won! I, I'm the national champion in the 400 meters." Um, she's super excited. The USC track coach walks up to me and is, "Deshaun, um, who are you speaking to?" <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm already mind blowing and I'm like um, I'm speaking to my mom and he's like can I speak to her uh, alright okay. I, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I don't know what's going on yeah. so he gets on the phone and he's like Miss Cunningham um, I want you to be the first one to know that we're going to offer your son a full ride scholarship oh my god mind blowing experience that's incredible mind blowing experience 
Nations. And then what about the rest of the races? Um, well, that was, <laughs> that was that was my national champion. So I was in, coming out of high school, I was mm -hmm. a national champion. Um, and then we had to do regular season. I actually finished second in state. Uh -huh. um, our four by four got third in state. We, I brought us back from last place mm -hmm. to third place, and I walked one of my best friends, Reggie Bush, Reggie in that Bush. race. Race, so I, I, I never oh. let him hear the end of it. Oh. Never let him hear the end of it. Never she walked him. Reggie. Walked him. Oh, <laughs> walked him. that's all I do is walk. So I don't know the experience <laughs> of running, but um, so at what age did you, you you knew you know like for me you know you know being a fat kid coming up you know and somebody snatches your Twinkie from you. You know, it's another fat kid, so you don't have to run too far to beat him up or anything. But what did you know that, man, I'm fast. I'm, I can run. I mean, when was this? Um, it was actually I, my first experience running track. I was in Hawaii. I was around nine. Okay. My mom put me in this summer program for just things to do. Mm -hmm. And they had a little track program. And there was this meet that they have. It's called the Luau um, Championship, where mm -hmm. they have some of the top runners in Hawaii. And so she has this video camera and she's videotaping me run. And they're like, w where's Deshaun? And everybody's <laughs> like, he's the kid way in the front. <laughs> and then from that experience, it was just, right. it was history. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm good at this. I mean, uh -huh. This is my natural gift. So, I mean, I might as well see where, as far as I can take this tool. And did you play other sports at the same time or? You play football or basketball or anything else? So I was always a track guy, but mm -hmm. I always played football. Okay. So I've been playing football for Skyline. Skyline, all oh, oh, Skyline oh, Tigers oh, out there. Right, right. All the Skyline Tigers. Well, good thing we got Cooper out here with yeah. Balboa. Yeah. <laughs> Want anything to happen. <laughs> so it was always a Skyline Tigers guy and then played high school football. Um, and then I made it, when I went to USC, I was a full ride track scholarship. But I told him, if I'm going to USC, I want to play football. Right. So... So then, I, and then um, got to USC, ran track, and then played football. But then I tore my ACL. Oh, oh not good. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, not it's good. crazy. But actually, it was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. Okay. So all you athletes, there's some things that happen to you in your lives as far as traumatic events. But mm -hmm. it's the way you you weigh, the way that you look at them. Because me tearing my ACL, most people are like, wait, that's yeah. the worst thing that could have ever happened to you. Right. Um, and it actually, for, for a minute it was until I turned that situation to a great thing because first off, I was big headed when I got to school. Uh, I was, me and Reggie were walking around campus like, oh yeah, we the same <laughs> boys. <laughs> we, we the man around campus. <laughs> Everybody knew us. Um, and then, so it was reality check that athletics, I needed something beyond athletics. Uh, so that was one thing. And then um, it started getting me to read these different books. I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. Wow. Um, that's when I got into my entrepreneurial thing. Um, first company I started when I was at USC, I started a entertainment company called okay. Trojan Man Entertainment. Okay. So <laughs> Trojan Man. <laughs> Trojan Man Entertainment. I know. You Nothing mean, about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Trojan Man ENT. Yeah. So we had a lot of athletes, um, and it was catered to the, the athletics experience. Mm -hmm. So all these athletes had this following. We were we had a good time in Hollywood, so we mm -hmm. might as well. And then, sorry, they were charging these. They were charging athletes and students all over LA a bunch of money for parties, and they were they were naming these parties the official USC party, uh -huh. and I'm like, if these are the official USC party, and none of you guys go to USC, <laughs> wait, wow. I can do this. <laughs> I can do this, and why why pay them when they could pay me? Yeah. Right, right. So I was like, let me step into that. We did we did really well. Okay. Um, our events were anywhere from 700 people to. 1,500 sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So you majored in business? Or? Um, I was a sociology major uh -huh. with um, um, an, adver sorry, an advertising slash entrepreneurship minor. Oh, man. That's great. Yeah. So you took care of business in the classroom. Tell these kids, man. Man, dude. Like, if you guys get the opportunity to go to a school, go to college, you've got to take in full advantage of the school. Dude, I was a terrible student as far as academically, but my effort made it up. I was uh -huh. always in class. I was always talking to my teachers like, look, I'm not, a, I'm not the best test taker, but I'm, I'm here to work and wherever you need me to do, whatever I need to do, extra credit, like I did it. So, I mean, there's a lot of other kids that can, can relate to not being a great student, but um, just make sure that you do all the necessary steps to 
get those grades, put right. yourself in position. So you parlayed that into your new, your new venture, which is called Loudmouth Inc., which I love. Okay, these are, these are mouthpieces, but they're not normal mouthpieces. Yeah. Describe these. So the company's called Loudmouth Guards. Um, and you can find it at www.loudmouthguards.com. Um, the concept actually came from when I was at USC with Reg. Um, he used to wear the 619 on his eyes. Right. Oh, yeah. And everybody, it was a big, <clears throat> big thing. And I was right in the middle of that craze. Um, everybody was looking at USC. We were at the spotlight. And he wore the 619 to represent his area code. Right. We were the 619 boys. Right. So I saw that trend take off. And all these kids were wearing um, their area codes and different things saying on their, their eyes. And I'm like, Reg, you started this trend and never made any money off of it. So I had always kept that in the back of my mind. And then when I moved back down to San Diego, I started doing research on different businesses and found an opportunity with these mouth guards that you can do a custom, add a customization piece to it right. and do really well. And we launched officially in October last year mm -hmm. and we're doing really, really well. I mean, we got a long way to go, but we're moving. We were, um, we did the mouth guards for the holiday bowl, the oh, poinsettia nice. bowl. Um, we had one of the guys in the national championship last year wearing it. The kid in that this game, the Miami game yesterday, right. the elder kid, the one that all this rage is about, mm -hmm. he scored. He's wearing our mouth guard. <laughs> so it's 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 crazy and it's growing, man. We also had um, Keenan Allen from the Chargers. Mm -hmm. If you guys watched the game tonight with the Broncos and the the Broncos and the Packers, the, the Packers. They're both 6 0. The running back for the Denver Broncos will be wearing our mouth guard as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And we're growing. So and that's Ronnie Hill, right? Ronnie Hillman. Ronnie Hillman. State. State, State, yeah. Yeah. So um, how about the high schools? Are, have they jumped on? Are you getting are you getting some guys, you know? I saw, I've seen a, a few guys in high school in the game mm -hmm. wearing them. Like, I get excited because these games, I mean, they're, they're describing the designs you have on the different ones you have. Yeah. I mean, man, we've got a lot of high school kids. A lot. I mean, Helix. We've got La Jolla, mm -hmm. we've got Madison, we've got Morris, um, Del Norte. There's a few guys from all over the county that are really, really buying into this whole concept, this mouth guard concept. So we've got Shark Teeth for a few. We've got Digital Camos. The big seller is the Fangs. If mm -hmm. you guys go to our yeah. website, again, it's www.loudmouthguards.com. You're not, you're going to see that all of the Fangs are completely sold out. Um, but we're, we've got some new designs coming out mm -hmm. and some new different models. So we're going to keep, keep um, innovating. Right. right. Athletes are all about that swag. Yeah, exactly. Now, what about for other sports? Like, rugby players wear mouthpieces, uh, lacrosse. Basketball. Something. Basketball. I mean, it might be a little too big for basketball. Yeah. But uh, do you guys do other size mouthpieces or other designs? Or uh, Yeah, we're actually – because we only launched in October last okay. year. So we actually have some other designs coming, mm -hmm. some in-the-mouth mouth guards. But – we wanted to start and build a brand around this pacifier style mouth guard first. Gotta start and then somewhere. We're, exactly. We gotta start there and then we're gonna use that and then we're gonna branch off. Because our, our big vision is becoming one of the top mouth guard brands out there. Which, well, what's great is I mean, you don't have to boil it. You don't have to get the special one for your dentist. You know, if you have braces you you can wear this. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are so positive about this. One size fits all. I mean the boiling, that's the biggest thing because yeah. you got guys on <clears throat> You know, who lose their mouthpiece in a game, yeah. and then they got to put on this mouthpiece that they shouldn't be wearing because it doesn't <laughs> exactly. fit right. Exactly. You know, and this thing you can just pop right in; you're good to go. That's uh, parents love it. I mean, the pop right in aspect it's it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I know some of our guys shouldn't be around boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. So we just gonna keep pumping and keep getting it out there, and yeah, we're definitely gonna keep. We'll be in Las Vegas this year for all the tournaments again. Um, definitely look out for us again on the the, the Holiday Bowl and the Point City Bowl because we'll be donating mouth guards there. But definitely look at it, look out for us in the, the college level, in the NFL level, and in all your local areas because we're growing. We're growing. Right, right. And people, these things we'll have it up on our website later on. Uh, Iggy, these things are beautiful. So stick stick with uh, with us right now, and we'll be right back. We're gonna take a break. This is the Coach Rose Show on KBLKRadio.com. Be right back with Deshaun Cunningham. Hey, we're back on the Coach Rose Show. I am Coach Rowe. I got my man, 
Iggy from the Iggy Biggity. What's up with it? <laughs> Our guy, uh, Sir Armon. Armon from the planet of Lovetron, the king <laughs> of the concubines, is on assignment. He's in Vegas. Yeah, he's on assignment, so we'll, we'll have him back next week. Uh, we're back here with Deshaun Cunningham, former UC High School, University City High School athlete, also a uh, USC track and football entrepreneur, loudmouth guards, Inc. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. The Trojan man himself. The Trojan man himself. <laughs> Twitter. Twitter. What's your Twitter, my man? Um, our Twitter man, our handle is Loudmouth Guards, and Instagram is Loudmouth Guards as well. Okay, okay. So uh, you mentioned you were, you played at uh, Skyline. Okay, tell me about those years. Were you were you an offensive lineman, or were you a receiver, or running back? <laughs> <laughs> taking taking me back, huh? yeah. taking me all the way back. Yeah. Um, so I was a wide receiver. Okay. Um, I didn't throw much, did they? They actually did throw okay. a little bit. I okay. mean, it wasn't a lot, but it was. Pop Warner, so oh, yeah, that's Pop Warner. Yeah, gotta get a every, the five yards in and out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It was good. Yeah. It was great experience, man. Yeah. I, I really loved it, and it, it was great for me because starting this product, I, I had been there, so yeah. I, it's it was all about the swag when I played exactly. Pop Warner. Exactly, it's all about you know whoever had the spats on their and the cleats and, and the visors, and mm-hmm. you had the nice face mask, and you had the matching gloves to go with your mouthpiece. <laughs> So it was all about the swag. You look good, you play good. Hey, you look good, you play good. That's our actually actually our slogan. There it is. Look man. good, play good. <laughs> there it is. You have to, man. You gotta look good. Exactly. So uh in Skyline, so you got a few passes here and there. Did you play defense as well? Actually I didn't. We oh. had such a stack we had a such a stack squad. Oh, yeah. Name some of these guys. There gotta be some legends on your team. Um, let me think. Who was still on that team? It's um Daryl Sona from Ooh. Helix was playing. Whoa. Um, let me think. Who was we played against? We played against Reg. Uh-huh. Um, he was playing for Grossmont, I think, at the time. Okay. Who else was on our team? Um, that made it to college. Sherrod was playing with us for a little bit. Sherrod, Sherrod James. Davis. Oh, did he go to Oregon or something? Yeah, he went to Oregon and then he transferred, and I think he finished. No, I'm not exactly sure where he finished, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's that, he was a great kid from oh, South East. Nice. Yeah, he was, he was a beast. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, your teams were just loaded. <laughs> we were nice. Yeah. We, we we went nine and one, lost in the championship. Actually, we lost in the second round to Chula Vista. Mm-hmm. They had this stack. I mean, this running back was I'm like, yo, you you got to be two years older. Yeah, I got a beard. Yeah, I'm like, yo, how are you? <laughs> Three kids and a wife. <laughs> drove there. <laughs> he drove there. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? Come on, I got to get you guys home. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the the main rival for well, back then? Is it still? Um, back then because it was all Pop Warner, mm-hmm. um, it was VP, but they Ooh. they split the leagues now. Uh, so yeah. VP is now in the, they're still in Pop Warner, but Skyline has now moved to the AYF, okay. American Youth Football League. Gotcha. Um, so that was kind of adjustment when I went back to the whole Pop Warner. I'm like, wait, there's no more Ghetto Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> the Ghetto Bowl? Yeah. No more, because that, that, everybody looked forward to playing VP. Exactly. Skyline VP was that game. Exactly. Was game. And then it moved to... All the kids that went to Skyline moved to Morris, and then it was it went from the Skyline VP to Morris Lincoln. Right, that was the game. Exactly, that man. was the game, man. Gotta bring that back, man. Glory years. You better stop busting then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. but they bust everybody out. Yeah, they, I mean, I got bust out to UC, and I should have went to Morris. Oh, um, just think of all the guys that. Uh-huh. I mean, Daryl went to, he lived pretty close. He yeah. went to Helix. Right. Um, Sherrod lived, he was kind of Spring Valley and went out to Monta Vista. Right. Um, a few other guys got bust out to Scripps Ranch, right. Kearney, all over the place. Wow. I mean, well, you know, you, you show up to practice and there's, you know, 40 receivers and yeah. 30 running backs. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Makes you sense. Know, you know? <laughs> Can you explain the, you know, getting up at what four four thirty you know, to get on the bus and that that whole thing. Um, it was yeah. I think it was, you know, it was about we had to get up at probably around five, mm-hmm. get up, and then I had to walk to the actual bus stop, and then we had to take the bus all the way up to La Jolla to go to school. Um, it it definitely it's a mindset because mm-hmm. you have to it's. You have to train your body mm-hmm. and your mind to get up that early in the morning to right. get there and catch your bus. But I mean, it's all applicable. You can you can apply that stuff to things in life. Right. right. If you can get up and be um, on time to get to that bus stop, you can be on time to go to work. Right. You can be on time to go to class. You can be on time to do all the other right. stuff. 
So it's, I mean, you can apply some of this, some of the stuff of riding that bus and getting exactly. up that early to other things that we do in life. And then you had school. So you got on the bus, five o'clock in the morning, go on that, what, hour, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes yeah, or about so. 45 minutes in traffic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then you have school and then you have track or football. Yeah. And then you have a track or football practice and then you have to ride in the late bus the coming late all bus. the way back home stuck in traffic. That's the one you can't miss. And that's the one you can't miss because yeah. that's the late, that's the last one. <laughs> so last you missed one. that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then, then you get home and then you have to do homework and eat. Right. So you're eating and then you got homework and then don't let you have like a test or some, oh. some big project yeah. that you have to work on. And you're, but I mean, just like you, all these young athletes out there, man, everything in life is it's a learning lesson. Mm-hmm. Take it and use it and apply it to things, to other things you guys have in life. Cause it's important. Exactly. It's, I mean, so after four years of that, you go to the USC and your time management skills are, are pretty good. Exactly, man. It was it was it was really helpful. I mean, because college, it's it's all the stuff that I dealt with, but accelerated because mm-hmm. we have two practices a day. Um, sometimes we have weights, um, and then we've got class. And then with me, I had out my outside act, my activities, so right. all the entrepreneurship stuff. Right. So, I mean. It was crazy as far as handling and juggling all this stuff, but it was prioritized. Taking one one day at a time, making sure I went to all my classes because I needed to go to all my classes because, like I said before, I wasn't the best student, so I had to do what I could to make sure that I was on top of everything. Right. So going to class and then allowed me to get the time to do other things right. because I'll spend that time in class with the teachers, which got my grades up, but allowed me to when I wasn't on the football field or the track field to go and right. figure out how to build a business and exactly. make money. Right. So now all the track meets at USC, I mean, those must have been like spectacles. I mean, like, I mean, there's way, you know, a bunch of colleges and you know, can you explain like, the, the experience of running track in college? And if any of you guys can go to the USC and UCLA dual meet, Ooh. that is an experience. Really? I mean, yeah, they, cause USC, wouldn't be USC without UCLA. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying Good that, point. but you, hey, 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 hey. USC point. is still the number one school, but we wouldn't be who we were without them. So yeah. you come to USC and you know that the one team that you have to beat is UCLA. So you go into that dual meet knowing this is bragging rights. Cause we, yeah. it's, it's pretty much what's, who, who's the team that runs LA? Right. So you see these guys at all your parties. You see them at, <laughs> I mean, you're talking to girls, they probably talk to the same girls. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's important. Right. It's, it's important to win those meets. Right. So, you're going out there and then you're lined up and it's only us. So, it's USC, UCLA, USC, UCLA, USC, UCLA. Oh, wow. So, the the best thing the USC guy can do or a team can do is sweep. We sweep the 100, sweep the 200. Cool. That means all of us win. Right. That means we can walk around even prouder. Right. None of them beat us. Right. So, those, those meets were really intense as far as the rivalry, but also just the, the brotherhood because all the SC guys wanted to win. So right. it, our bonds grew really, really strong because of those meets. Right, oh, right. Man. So the USC UCLA thing is not just football. Oh man, it's every every sport. I but, mean, oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. I was going to say, how many of those football guys are, are running track oh, also yeah. for both schools? Man, actually, because that can carry over. Yeah, you actually get a few. Like, um, did we Reggie do in the beginning? He was actually supposed to, but I think his first year he had a little issue, I think with his hamstring or something. Mm-hmm. So he decided not to run. But um a jar the top wide receiver right playing right now, um the the corner, a, a Dory, a Dory, oh, a Dory Jackson. Jackson. A Dory yeah. Jackson. He's crossed over right now and he's playing. Wow. And he's he's long jumping and I think he's running the four by one. So oh. I mean that adds to the USC's depth. Right. Because we go to against UCLA. UCLA has they their 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 school doesn't cost as much as USC. Mm-hmm. So USC only has twelve male scholarships oh. compared to UCLA, where they split scholarships. Oh. So they give half scholarships. They potentially have twenty four players mm-hmm. or athletes mm-hmm. that can compete against our twelve. Oh. So they may not win first place and everything, but yeah. they're getting a lot of second, and third, second, points, and third, points, second, yeah. and third, second, okay. and third, and then they win every once in a while. Mm-hmm. 
Once yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, we had a phone, maybe. <laughs> so it was it was tough, but I mean, we pulled it out. We definitely dominated UCLA while while I was there, right? Um, but it was definitely a good match, and it, it, it prepared us for running in CIF, or not CIF, but in our nationals, mm-hmm. which we usually crushed UCLA in Damn. because UCLA had the the numbers for the dual meet, but they mm-hmm. didn't have the strength. At the national level, like we did. So in high school, what was your times for those events? I mean, th- did you improve in college or? Yeah, so I ran a forty-seven one in high school. Ooh, yeah, and then high I, school, yeah, and then moved up to when I got to USC. Um, especially after I tore the ACL, me and there was a little political. Oh, actually, I didn't talk about that. I tore my ACL. Oh, I did talk about that. I tore my ACL. Bit, yeah. Um, but I tore my ACL, and me and the track coach, the four hundred meter coach. He, we didn't really see eye to eye right. after he saw me go out and play on the team and tear my ACL. So yeah. he moved me up to the 800. So I, I came back, ran the 800. I ran a 148, I think it was like mid, which took me out to, I think I made it to nationals, but I didn't place. Mm-hmm. Um, but I finished an All-American the year after I tore my ACL. Wow. Man. So you, you worked hard to get back. Man. And you Man. made the nationals. Yeah, so let me just that 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 tear my ACL. So my sophomore year, um, yeah, my sophomore year, I tore my ACL. Um, sticking Steve Smith, I was breaking. <laughs> oh, 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 I went to make a break to get a pick. Um, but body went one way, knee went the other way. Oh. Um, tore ACL, so I had to go through surgery. Not only did I go through surgery. Um, I lost my scholarship. Oh. I lost my girlfriend at the time. Oh, wow. I had to move out of my apartment. Oh, man. Um, so all this stuff happened to me. And I reiterate, it was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but so while all this stuff happened, I got a job. I was rehabbing. I was getting my mind right because mentally I had to rebuild my, my leg, but also rebuild my mind because right. I was, I mean, I was at all time low. Yeah. All that stuff had happened to me. I mean, you can just imagine how my mental, my, my mindset was just right. mentally being depressed as far as going from that guy on campus mm-hmm. to your coach says you're not going to be able to run again. Right. So. Proved him wrong. Proved him wrong. I, 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 I determined myself. I mean, I made it. Um, it was really important for me to work twice as, twice as hard to get right. back out there. So I was working out in the mornings. I was working out at the night. Um. I was rehabbing during yeah, the day. Yeah. Well, USC, I mean, they got a great, great sports medicine program over there. So yeah, they got a great sports medicine program. It's it's awesome as far as the trainers. They take you on the pool workout and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great, it was a great experience, a great rehab. And then when I got back and actually made it back on the field mm-hmm. um, to come from that in one season, right? Um, and I I tip my hat to the, that program for that. So. Um, you lost a scholarship because of the injury, or did you get it back? Okay, so yeah, so I tore my ACL. The track coach had a, me sit down with the athletic director because they felt the way I tore my ACL that I wouldn't make it back. So being that he didn't think I was going to make it back, he wanted, and remember I said there's only 12 scholarships. Right. He wanted to take that scholarship and give it to somebody else right. because if I can't run, I can't score any right. points, exactly. which means his job's on the line. You're not helping me. Right. So he talked to the athletic director about, you know, we got to get rid of this guy. Mm-hmm. And it, the athletic director said, we, we're not going to redshirt you, but if you want to make, if you can make it back this year, mm-hmm. you can make it back. Right. So I eventually got my scholarship back yeah, once I came go. back. Right. Um, and decided not to do the, the white shirt, which is what they wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to white shirt, which meant I wouldn't have played athletic or any type of NCAA sport ever again, Whoa. but I would have been able to just go to class. Oh, oh, oh. Nah, I can't do that. I mean, I, I put too many years into building myself up, right. and this was who I was right. at the time. That's exactly. who I was. So all them years, you know, riding the bus early, high school, getting a scholarship to USC to track and playing some football, and then the injury, and then, you know, this you had a lot of discipline to get this stuff done. And all that, it was all because of the stuff that had happened to me previously in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, going to the buses, I mean, riding the school bus early in the morning, getting my grades up mm-hmm. in high school, mm-hmm. um, 
discipline myself in practice as far as working harder than everybody else, doing double days in high school, all that stuff prepared me for that situation. Right. I didn't know it at the time, but yeah. it all was preparation for that moment. Right. And it's it's I think everybody has these life choices mm -hmm. or these crossroads and right. and that was my crossroad. It was right. do I do I compete and try to get back or do I just give up and throw in the towel? Right. My thing was, nah, I'm work work my butt off to get back. And like I did work really, really hard on and off the field to get back. And not only did I get back and become an all American in track, I had a business that was making me a lot of money. Right. So that's so why I say to say one of the best things could ever happen to me because right, right. it's a once exactly. in a lifetime experience at USC. I did all this stuff at USC. Well, that's some incredible stuff. I mean, that's a great story. And uh, let's tell the people again about your loud mouth cards and where they can get a hold of you and order these uh, mouth guard, mouth pieces and, and the whole Twitter and the whole Facebook and all that. Yeah, definitely follow us at Loud Mouth Guards on Twitter. You can also follow us at Loud Mouth Guards on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, definitely send us an email if you ever want to talk to me or have any questions about anything. You, it's info at loudmouthguards.com. Um, all these young aspiring athletes, man, keep your head down and just keep on it, man. There's a lot of opportunity out there and just keep moving forward at every, at all costs, at all exactly. costs. So and the website is www.loudmouthguards.com. And yeah, definitely check us out. Man. Deshaun, I want to thank you for coming. It's, it's an honor. You're doing a great job with these mouth guards. Great business. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon, man. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir, thanks I'll for having me. Thank you, Deshaun. Thank you. All right. All right.